so what I wanted to do on this video really quick before I drop everything is I wanted to share. Okay, so Thursday was the first time I did a couple little odds and ends here and there. And um, so I wanted to share a couple of the 4th of July tags that I made. Um, this particular tag, I didn't I didn't put the little the little um, thread in it yet, but um, I did some 4th of July tags. I made that one. Um, I made that one. And this one. And these are from some of the stickers from Dollar Tree. Um, I cut out some stars. Um, I think this is a pebble set. Um, and then these were also from Target, I believe, these stickers right here. These were some of the stars that I hauled from Hobby Lobby. The stars in the back were Target stars. Um, and I think that was, oh, was it? no, these were Dollar Tree. The I believe these were Dollar Tree, the um, glittered, glittered ones. So yeah, so I went ahead and made some 4th of July. This this was already in the little, this little tag was already in this package with the pebbles. So I just kind of threw that together. I did just a little bit of Wink of Stella around that sticker because it was really plain, but um, it's not really showing up all that well. And there's that one. And there is that one. So yeah, so I made a few tags, 4th of July tags to add into some of my happy mail. And hopefully, I don't know, I may get them out before 4th of July. <laughs> it's so sad because, I, you know, I just have not been crafting. I feel so bad. Um, and then I made these the other day too. And I told you that I had hauled the, this um, material from Hobby Lobby. Um, it just looked like the older flags. And um, I had picked up these little um, uh, buttons from Tuesday morning. It was uh, part of the Tim Holtz collection, Little Timmy. Um, so I went ahead and pick, um, made some of these. And then uh, this little shabby eyelash trim was from Hobby Lobby I had got on clearance. So um, I went ahead and add some of, their, some of them in there to make that look shabby. So I'm not sure. I think this is considered shabby. Let's, let's hope, because I'm not really positive. Um, I kind of put it on my Instagram asking. <laughs> so um, I did a few of these. Um, I did some without, as you can see. And then I did a few more with the eyelash trim. And I can see this eyelash trim just did not, I guess I didn't glue it properly because it's coming out, so I'll have to fix that. But yeah, so I thought they turned out really super cute. Um, and like I said, I'm hoping this is shabby. <laughs> so I had made some of those. Okay, and I was asked really quick um, to do a tutorial on, um, oh my goodness, uh, my rosettes. And I was actually scared to do them because I don't really do tutorials. Um, but I thought, you know what, if somebody asked me, I should really do what they asked. That's, that's, the nice way to go about it so I'm going to show you really quick I mean they're not that hard um, for me um, I don't always do complete circles but I'm going to show you so what I go ahead and do is I usually bend it first I start off bent my nails are a mess so I'm sorry um, unroll some of the crepe paper and this is just I believe this one happens to be from let's see this one is from Dollar General and the red that I'm going to use is from Dollar Tree. You can see that it actually is one of the thicker of the two, you know, because there's some that are really thin. So I usually just fold it. And I usually just, I guess, usually I have a longer nail, which is sad. I don't have my nail broke, but usually I have a longer nail. And for whatever reason, I just usually tuck my nail there and then I just slide it up. And this is going to be really difficult for me to see with the camera right in front of my face, but I'm going to try my best, okay? So bear with me. So I just kind of go up and try to make just little folds. And then I turn it as I go and just hold your thumb in the, in the center to hold it in place. Okay. And try to usually work on getting the same size. Okay. And I just keep going around. And the thing is, that's so awesome. If you don't like the way it turns out, just let it go. 
let it go and start all over again. And I'm going to be honest, um, not all my minor perfect circles, um, but I do my best. Um, and I'm honestly, I think practice makes perfect. Okay. So you just got to keep practicing with it. And I, like I said, I'm not always perfect, but I usually overlap right there. See how I kind of just overlapped it and you can see that it's not, you know, perfect right here. Um, and so I usually just hold it in place. I have um, a stapler that has like a wide end in it, and this is so old school. I don't. I think this was my mom and dad's stapler at one time, and I just go ahead and staple it to hold it in place. Okay, turn it to the back, and then just cut it. Okay, and like I said, if it's not a perfect circle, which this is not, it's up to you. You can go ahead and trim it on the edges if you want. You know, just kind of go around and trim it. One thing you can do if you want to is um, if you have um, a circle, you know, you can use a cup, just make a circle pattern and you can go put it, put a circle, a circular pattern right over it and then just go ahead and trim away if you'd like. Um, or if you wanted to die cut it, just put a, perf a circle around it. It will flatten it out, but you could just die cut it. You can die cut butterfly shapes. You can die cut star shapes. You can actually die cut any shape, a flower shape, any shape you want, um, which is awesome. So if you don't get a complete circle, you can all the ones that you don't feel that are complete circles, you can go ahead and, like I said, just uh, shape them. Okay, and I'll do that one more time, just in case you didn't. And I'm using red, white, and blue because 4th of July is coming up. But yeah. So let me go ahead and do this real quick. I'll cut it because this is brand new. Okay. So let's try that one more time. So you just fold it back. Okay, fold a little piece back. We're going to go ahead and just tuck behind. Hold it with your thumb in the center. Tuck behind, tuck behind, fold up, tuck behind. See, I don't always get it right and I'm nervous too trying to explain this so it makes it even worse. I'm so sorry. Tuck behind, tuck behind, whoops, tuck behind. Sometimes they come out smaller. It depends on how much you, um, you know, stick it into the center and sometimes they come out bigger. It just depends on, I don't know. Uh, how you're wrapping it. So this one you can see is already come. Oh, actually this one's actually coming out the same size. I thought it looked like it was smaller. And usually a good thing is unroll it so that it doesn't feel so tight, which I didn't do right now. So it felt really tight on me. So kind of unroll it a little bit. And a lot of times I'll just do these while I'm watching TV. Okay. So two staples and then cut the back okay so see that kind of turned out a little bit better more of a circle okay and I'm gonna show you one other thing okay so I just have some tool here um, this tool I happen to pick up at um, uh, Aliexpress okay I'm just gonna cut a little piece here Okay, and then also while I have it open, I'm going to cut something else. Okay, I'm going to figure, I'm just going to kind of glance at this. I'm going to figure maybe, um, let me think about this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do about two inches. Okay, and then I'm going to do a small, a small little piece. Okay, this is going to be a secondary bow. What I'm gonna do okay and usually I just keep the plastic just to keep it nice and neat and then um, at the Dollar Tree I bought a bunch of rubber bands so I just use the rubber bands a lot of times I'll use the rubber bands to wrap around my tool and I'll use the rubber bands to wrap around my um, uh, ribbons okay okay so what I'm gonna show you really quick is let's do this one more time with the blue Unravel some so it's not so tight. Let's get it all easier to deal with. Okay, 
So we're going to go ahead and do the blue real quick. One, two, if it helps to count, that works. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, whoops, ah, that last one, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, sometimes it helps to count only because you'll have an idea of how many, you know, you'll get used to how many little uh, creases you put in, okay? So, what I was going to show you is you also can, if you wanted to, this is not the perfect color to go with this, but if you wanted to put the tool over it, you can go ahead and put the tool over it and then go ahead and staple. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this. And usually when I use the tool, um, I usually, um, it's not, sorry, it's usually not this big of a sheet that I usually use. Um, I usually kind of measure it into little squares. And sometimes the squares don't fit around the whole perimeter. And the reason for that is, is because I'm actually going to use them to cut. So I guess if you wanted to, you can go ahead and cut around the edges, you know, like this, and just cut a circle all the way around. And it's kind of actually ends up being kind of a messy circle that I've noticed when I've done it in the past. It ends up being a little bit of a messy circle, like I said. You can use a pattern to put around it to try to get a perfect circle, circle if you want. But So you can either have a messy circle going around it, or you can go ahead and die cut. But I will let you know ahead of time, most of my die cuts, whether it's a really good die cut or not, a lot of my die cuts don't cut perfect. They'll cut, they'll cut it perfect in a sense where they'll cut the the back perfect, the actual crepe paper, but the material, a lot of times there'll be little hanging pieces. So you will have to go around and cut little bits all around because for whatever reason, this tool doesn't cut all the way through. Okay. And I've tried it with a few different kinds of tools and I still get the same effect. It doesn't cut all the way through. So yeah, I just thought I'd mention that to you. So you can, you know, that's one way of doing it. Okay. Or another way I should say of doing it. Okay, so then I wanted to show you this really quick. So this was this was um this was my idea. Um well not my idea, but I've seen some a couple different people do this. Okay, so we cut the tool and it's the length of the tool, okay? And this is the way to make the bows. Um hmm, I was looking oh, I do have a paper clip. Okay, this works. I usually have bigger paper clips. I mean, not paper clips, um, clothespins. Um, you fold it in. Okay, this this is going to be smaller. I did I did I did the wrong size. Okay, but you fold it in, and then you fold it in again. Okay, so you can fold it twice like that. Okay, and what you do is you just want to kind of do a little. You can either do a scrunch, where you can. Scr scrunch it together if you wanted to like this okay you can scrunch it together whoops something just fell sorry you can scrunch it together where you can make a bow like that or you can just kind of fold it like a little bit of an accordion fold like this Okay, and then what I usually do is I will put um, the clothespin right in the center. Okay, see how it goes like that? Put the clothespin in the center. And usually when I do the clothespins, um, they're usually big, so I just set them up like this and I just do a whole bunch at one time. Then you get your um, 
little piece of tool that we got. You go around like this, okay? And this is a long piece. Usually I use half of this, but I'm just doing this for the video. And then you go ahead and lightly just get it, you know, just kind of make a little um, tie. And then you let the clothespin go. And then you kind of move it over to the center. Okay, so can you see that? All right, and then since you have it where you want it to be, then you go ahead and tighten. And I'm a, and I'm, and there's a few different um, tools that I've used. Um, I've used the tool at Hobby Lobby, which I will say works okay when you're tying. Um, I've used Hobby Lobby tool that has like a glitter. Um, I don't know how you... It, it kind of looks like they glued glitter on it, okay? It's a tool that glued, they glued glitter, so it made it really super stiff, and it doesn't work well. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It doesn't really work. Oh, look, so this one kind of made... Oh, this kind of turned into a circle. <laughs> I didn't... Those are kind of cute. kind of just looks like a little rosette. So, um... I didn't think about that. I didn't... Usually they look like little bows. I must have did something wrong. I don't know exactly what I did wrong, but uh, yeah, it looks like a rosette. Let's try that again. Okay, we'll use this little piece right here. See, when you do things on camera, things just don't always work out the way you think they're going to work out. Okay, so maybe I did... Maybe I tied it wrong. I don't know. Okay. Or not tied it, but folded it different. So let's do it like this. I think I did. I folded it different. Okay, and we're just doing the accordion. I did was, I folded it different. That's what it was exactly. Put the little um, clip on it. We'll get some more of this tool. Let me just use a piece that I already have. And two, when you cut the little pieces, a lot of times it's easier just to fold it like this and then cut. See, you get a perfect little piece, okay? So, like I said, I usually stand it up, and I usually use... Oh, I know where they're at. Let me show you real quick. So, I picked these up at Daiso. You don't have to use Daiso, but I usually use these Daiso Mickey Mouse ones, okay? So, let me show you how I do it. I usually use the Mickey Mouse Daiso. Put them around like this. And, of course, this is usually bigger. Um, I get the tool. Let's see, I'm going to go this way. Go around. Tie it. Sorry if I'm out of frame and you can't see me right now. I'm tr trying to look at what I'm doing and at the camera at the same time and I'm having a hard time. Okay. Goodness, why am I not? See, I'm telling you guys, I can't do camera stuff. I can't do stuff on camera. I'm not used to it. Okay. Okay. And like I said before, you take it out. You make sure that it's moved to the center. So crazy without my thumbnail. I'm so used to having that thumbnail to help me. Okay. And then. Tighten it, make one more last tie so that it's solid, okay, and then you cut the tip off, or not the tip, but the excess, and there, see, now you have a bow, so I guess there's two ways, so if you do the bow and look, see how the bow's kind of overlapping a little bit? Because I that part I didn't cut correctly. If you have a problem where it's overlapping, you just cut the edges off like that. So you have the bow. And you can see this one has the opening. So that's why this one made a rosette, because I did it where um it didn't have the I didn't have the opening. Okay. So hey, there I just see we just learned something together. So you have a way of making little rosettes. 
And then there's a way of making bows, which is pretty awesome, I think. That could be a really awesome way to make rosettes. Cute, cute. Okay, so I guess that's my tutorial. <laughs> So I want to say thank you so much for watching and um, I guess I will uh, see you on the next video. But really quick before I go, let me show you something really, really super fast. Okay, so the way I made these is, let me see. I just got some material. Okay, we're going to use this material for a second. Okay, I just got some material. Okay, I cut a thin piece going all the way around. I just folded it over, the thin piece. We're going to pretend like I have a thin piece, okay? Um, I glued it with um, some fabric, Fabri-Tac, all the way around, okay? So I just had these small little strips. So let's pretend like this is just a little strip that looks like, you know, yay big, okay? I went around the edges, the part, the part that I glued at the top, I just went on the edges that weren't glued. And I just cut little small cuts right to the glued part. Just little small cuts. So I had a strip. And I ended up cutting out a circle. Oops. I just cut out little circles. And I started from one end. Uh, one end right here. And then I just glued all the little pieces around. And then where the strip would um, end. I would just grab another strip and go all the way around. And then till I got to the center. And then I would leave just a little, a little small hole, and then I would put the, um, oh my gosh, button. Um, I was going to say embellishment, but I put the little button in the center. So yeah, so that's how that turned out like that. But they're really, really super fun and easy to make. Um, so I thought I'd just share that with you all. Okay, thank you again for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys.